This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine, and today we've asked Dr. Mads Gerd Hansen to tell us about his research in cancer and innate immunity. Hi, Mads. What is the link between innate immunity and cancer? So innate immunity is the part of our immune system that deals with really the first line of defense against uh, bacterial or viral infections. And it's a critical part of our well-being as humans, otherwise we wouldn't be able to fend off microorganisms. However, many of the processes that get activated during a normal immune response can also uh, lead to um, cancer development if not properly controlled. And is in some cases also utilized by cancer cells to promote their growth and spread within our body. How does inflammation influence tumor growth? So inflammation um, promotes tumor growth by, by generating a lot of uh, signaling uh, chemicals in our body um, which in normal instances is a response to a bacterial infection. Uh, but these uh, chemicals can also promote uh, the, the growth of, of tumor cells so they start proliferating faster. It can also promote their spread throughout the body uh, to create metastasis. And in fact, um, a lot of uh, cancers actually utilize this normal system, which is normally a part of our innate immune system, to actually promote their own growth so they can educate the rest of the, our healthy cells to start producing these factors locally so to promote the, the, the spread of the cancer. What is ubiquitin and how does it work? So ubiquitin is a small uh, protein that's encoded in our genome and uh, it's a small protein that gets attached onto other proteins in our cells to uh, change their uh, function or where they are in the cell or even the fate of these proteins. And it regulates or controls many of the key processes in our cells, such as the cell's ability to divide, to repair its DNA. But also in the immune system, it's absolutely critical to, to mount an in immune response and create inflammation. Uh, so it's a, it's a key signaling molecule, similar to, to um, uh, phosphorylation uh, in our cells. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five to ten years? So within my area of research, I would say it's, it's the, our increased understanding of the ubiquitin molecule, that it, all the different things that it does within the cell and the different signals uh, it constitutes. So we now understand that ubiquitin, modification of proteins by ubiquitin, uh, constitutes a, a complete code that can uh, change uh, the, the function of proteins in various ways and can affect uh, very different uh, cellular processes such as our repair of our DNA, uh, cell division, immune responses and so forth. And we're only now starting to unravel uh, this ubiquitin code but there's still many many unanswered questions that we need to address in the future. And then the second line of, of uh, research that, has, that is really interesting um, is our increased understanding of, of the relationship between us as complex uh, organisms and uh, bacteria and viruses and, and fungi uh, that we interact with all the time throughout our lifetime. Um, and in fact, we have, most adults have about three pounds of bacteria in our intestinal system at any given time. And these are very beneficial and keep us healthy, but we also need to, to be able to, to deal with them and keep them at bay so we, they don't colonize our body. And this uh, very close relationship between our uh, microbial env environment is really uh, an understanding when this breaks down this relationship, how this affects human health. It's a very uh, interesting line of research, I believe. So why is your line of research important and why should we put money into it? My lab mostly focuses on, on very basic, the fundamental principles of how signaling in the immune system works. But because we know that the defects in this system uh, can lead to very serious human diseases, both um, immune-related diseases, but also malignant disease, uh, cancer. Um, better understanding of the, the fundamental principles of how we control our immune system and how this efficiently fends off uh, invading bacteria, but still keeps us healthy, um, is really critical. Uh, and I strongly believe that if we are to, to develop um, uh, new drugs in the future, uh, to better treat uh, human diseases. We need to know the, the, the basic principles of how these processes work. Otherwise, we won't know how to design drugs. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So in addition to our kind of basic line of research, we also collaborate with clinicians at hospitals um, 
Uh, an example is, is, is our recent work together with the clinicians in, in Freiburg in Germany uh, that have primary care for, for patients that, that, that have an inherited immune deficiency, um, where we have then been able to bring together uh, their genetic information about the mutations and actually understand how this affects the proteins that they're working with and how this then, in this case, uh, affects uh, a certain part of the immune system. So we can actually now start linking a uh, inherited immune deficiency or, or immune defect uh, that affects these individuals into a, a very um, um, clear biological problem that they have in their cells, in their immune system. So where we really utilize our kind of very detailed molecular understanding of, of bi cell biology, we can link that into to the clinics. Thank you, Mads. Thank you.